When it comes time to take the temperature of America's commitment to church-state separation, my inbox can serve as a pretty handy thermometer. Given the position this show puts me in, I'm the first point of contact for a lot of people when they encounter unexpected violations. Right, a listener's kid gets sent home from their public school with Christian propaganda coloring books. Uh, a listener gets denied a promotion for not having proper Christian values. A listener notices a Christ is Lord plaque displayed at the county courthouse. And a lot of the time, their first thought is to email me and ask what to do. Right, and because of that, once I account for the growth of the show over time, I can roughly gauge the changes over time and how many people are being affected by Christian overreach. It's hardly a scientific measurement, but it's served as a pretty accurate shorthand in the past. And let me just say that as we move firmly into the school season throughout the U.S., that particular metric is off the fucking charts. See, I always have a spike in these types of emails around late August, early September, but I have never seen anything like this. Every day I'm getting at least three or four more messages from people saying, hey, is this shit legal right here? Kids are being led in prayer, being assigned Bible readings, being given religious pamphlets, being taught that evolution is just a theory. Over the last couple of weeks, I'm drowning in it like never before. In fact, it's even slipped the bounds of my work messages altogether and spilled out into my regular life. In the course of the last two weeks, I've received eight messages from people I know outside of work concerned about church state violations in their public schools. These people are not atheist activists. Several of them don't even identify as, as, as fucking atheists. One of them identifies as a Catholic. But their kids are being exposed to religious messages that make them uncomfortable, and I'm the only person they know who knows what to do next, right? So, so it's basically like my thermometer ran out of Fahrenheit and had to start borrowing degrees from Celsius. Now, I, I, let me be clear about the contrast here, okay? So that number, those eight people, that's up from a previous record of zero. Like, as you may know, when you tell people outside the atheist movement you're, that you do atheist activism, people are usually dismissive, if not hostile, to that. Even if they're not believers, you usually get a very, like, why not leave people to their beliefs and who are you to tell people what's right kind of attitude about this. It's seen as petty and arrogant to be an atheist activist by a lot of people. So a lot of these people that are calling me and messaging me now have to swallow a bit of pride to come to me for advice. Several of these messages contain some form of, okay, maybe you were right, which is a real hard thing for people to say. But that's where we're at. Because if there's anything that's going to force a person to choke down an oversized helping of pride, it's concern for their kids. Their kids are in the crosshairs of Christian nationalism. There is no question about that. You look at the focus on banning books from school libraries and stripping teachers' ability to decide for themselves what to talk about in the class. Look at this incessant rhetoric about kitty litter boxes in schools and trans girls in sports, this focus on taking over school boards and getting chaplains into schools and forcing teachers to teach from the fucking Bible. This is all an admission that they lost on this generation, so they're going after the next one. They're giving up on us and going after our kids. And one of the themes of all these messages, of course, that I've been getting is this frustration over the inability to fight these battles on their kids' behalf. Because, of course, much of this stuff has an opt-out system, right? Kids don't have to read from the Bible. They just have to go before their peers and declare themselves godless is all. And as was captured so perfectly a few weeks ago in that Burnsworth quote from the dad in Oklahoma, that's not something every kid is comfortable doing. Because the campaign isn't just about reinforcing cultural solidarity among Christian kids. It's also about otherizing the rest of the kids. It's about reminding the atheist kid and the Muslim kid and the Hindu kid that they're part of the out group. It's about bringing to bear all the pressure that places on a kid to conform. Y'all, we have a word for that shit. We have a word for people who take advantage of a child's natural timidity to strong arm them into doing what they want. The word is bully. That's what we're up against. We're up against the kind of people who would bully children when it's to their long-term advantage, and we should act accordingly.